and welcome to my knitting podcast. My name is Irma and you can find me on YouTube, Ravelry and Instagram as Volwerkjes. I sound really out of breath. <laughs> I'm recording uh, on our top floor. So we have our downstairs area. First floor or do you say second floor? I always got conf get confused with where they start counting in English. Um, but we have like the, the ground floor layer on top and another layer on top. And I'm recording on the top layer. <laughs> and I forgot something downstairs. So I went downstairs, got up, started recording. And now I'm out of breath. <laughs> Ease down. So, welcome to this little area on the internet where I share all the things I make. Mostly knitting. And I love that you are here to uh, join me in showing you all the things I made. Did that came out right? <laughs> I'm not sure. This is going to be a episode where nothing is going as planned. But we will just keep going. It will be fine. Okay. Um, as I said, I show the things I make. I always start with what I'm wearing when there are handmade things there. And there are two handmade things I am wearing at the moment. The first one is this cowl. I'm not going to take it off completely. It's the sock head cowl, which is a free pattern on Rev Ravelry. And it basically is like a tubular like a tube so you cast on stitch certain amount of stitches you do some ribbing in the round in the round in the round everything is knitted in the round so you start with some ribbing then you just knit the stockinette until you are on the top part where you make the ribbing again for the other side you cast off bind off cast on bind off bind off <laughs> And your sock head cowl is finished. This is the first project I made out of a hand dyed yarn. I think this is Manos del Uruguay. It's a lace weight that I held double to create a fingering weight. <laughs> What's the matter with my head? I can't I can't think of things. <laughs> So, socket cowl, really happy with it. It could have been a little bit tighter, but this way it's a nice like in-between thing to wear. So when it's like warm but not hot yet, you can still wear it with, without being flaming up and stuff. So that's really nice. I'm wearing another handmade thing and I have to stand up for that. And I have a new camera set up, so I have to see how this is going. Uh, it's the same room I recorded the last few episodes in, only a different spot. I really liked the natural light from outside, but I was right underneath the windows. And I think this is a little bit better, so uh, I think it's working. Uh, I'm going to pop up and see if this is also working. I think I have to pop up, yes, I have to stand up on my couch. I made this skirt without a pattern first time oh first time i did a uh, sew something without a pattern and i'm really proud of it um it's a gathered skirt so i had this fabric uh, left over from a uh, trousers i made it um was quite a big piece but not really enough to cut out a complete pattern or anything so I cut out a band for the uh, waist. I, how do you say that? I interfaced the one of the half of the fabric over the length. And I took the rest of the fabric, made a nice rectangle out of that. It's really bad with the talking this day. So I cut out the rectangle. I gathered it along the waistband. I cut out 
and I flipped over the waistband and sewed it together so that you have the raw edge of the gathering inside the waistband. I don't know if you can follow it, I totally understand I'm rambling, but let's just continue. So I did that and I uh, noticed that it was quite short. Some people would say too short. It was like too short to feel comfortable wearing it outside the house. So I was thinking what I'm gonna do and I had some leftover of this um, lace. So I just um, sewed it, so look, I sew it onto the, the bottom uh, of the skirt. I didn't have to do any um, hemming and stuff because this was a selvage. So uh, that was really nice. And although um, it is see-through, it makes the appearance of the skirt longer. So I'm very happy with that. I think the gathers could have been a little bit neater, but I couldn't be bothered with doing it again. So I will just rock it the way it is. Um, let me show you again. I did put a zipper in the only seam there is on the side. And I could have made it a little bit tighter, but again, I couldn't be bothered and I'm quite fine with how it is. So, two handmade items today. Very happy with that. So, let's continue through the things I have been working on the last two weeks. I don't have a finished object. I think... If I had just knitted on one project, I could have maybe finished something. But at the moment, I like all the different things. So I don't know why, but at the moment, I want to knit on something else every day. And I'm not casting on any more. <laughs> because I think there are enough projects to choose from. But it's nice to have something to choose from. So, <laughs> let's see what I have been working on. So, I am working on the Knit Along by Arden Carlos. They're doing at the moment. And uh, the initial idea they had was a cushion or a scarf. You make 18 squares and you can choose to sew them together and make a cushion out of it or make a scarf out of it. Uh, as I am doing double knitting, I think a cushion would be not a good idea because your one of your knitted size, sides will be in the cushion, so you can't see it. So I chose to make the scarf, although I can still change things up because I haven't joined anything. But that's the idea, I'm going to make a scarf out of it. Um, I think last time I had to do two or three squares to make all 18. I still have to knit two squares to make it to 18. I don't think I've shown this one on the podcast last time. It still needs blocking. Um, all leftovers I had laying around. They're all the same weight of cotton. I use this a lot when I made stuffed animals and things like that, but I'm not really doing that a lot anymore. So this was a good way to use up all those leftovers. I almost finished, it doesn't look like it, I almost finished this square. I had five rows to go. And then the light yarn, not this light yarn, but another light yarn, I run out. So I thought I would have the same color in a new skein, but I didn't. So I ripped it all out, <laughs> started over with another light color of cotton. And I will definitely have enough now because it's almost a new skein I'm using. So, but that's fine. It's all, uh, it's still a leftover, so no worries. But yeah, I could have finished this square but because of 
the shortest of yarn it's just started now it's fine it's fine i will work on this today when i finished recording and um, then it's just one square square left and only the joining to do so i think that's really nice so let me see um that's one thing i've been working on i'm not going to show the whole pile of squares i've already made because i did it last time and it would be not that fun to watch if i show them again so <laughs> you will see that when i'm going to join them so that's one of the things i've been working on although you can't see it <laughs> let me see i have other things i've worked on and i don't know if you can see the progress of this one but we will just see let me see i worked on my flex light oh i think you can see ah, i didn't do i did quite some work on this only because it's all just in round in round in round and all in the same color i don't think you can see the progress but there is definitely progress as i said the pattern is flex light i chose to put some knit stitches in between the increases just because I could so um, that's an alteration I made um, I need to fit it again to see when I have the right length and I'm thinking because there's no waist shaping or anything there will be quite some space around the waist in this sweater i think i'm going to make it a little bit longer and yeah we will see i think i'm not going to make it cropped so i think it will be like a proper sized sweater so yeah and yeah, i can stand up so we can see let me see like if i for like waist length cropped it would be already too long i think because i still have to do the ribbing and it will grow a little bit with blocking but i think i will make it like really until here or something we will see i really do love the color i say that every time i show it i really do love the color and i'm going to have tons of leftovers because i only on my second skein still and it's getting like really small now but all this is less than two skeins so i'm very very happy with that and i think i have eight skeins because they're 50 gram balls so i will have tons of leftover which will be nice because i love this color and i can make something else so that's really really fun the yarn i'm using is from Camarose, which is a Danish brand, I think, and it's their Tunt Lama Oud, which means it's 50% Lama wool. Do you say Lama wool or Lama fiber? And 50% sheep wool <laughs> to make the difference. Okay, so Lama and uh, sheep wool. And Lama, as I said in the earlier episodes, is a hollow fiber, so it will be very good isolating. So I'm hoping this will maybe keep me cool as well, but we will see that. And otherwise it will be nice for next autumn, but I really want to wear this. I'm very, very, very happy with this project. Perfect TV knitting. So let me see, where do I put all my stuff? Okay, just there. <laughs> there is some fiber lying here. And I don't want to put anything too close because the fiber will stick to my project. I'll show it in a bit. Okay, let me see. I have more works in progress. I started a, what's in here? not going to show that. I started a new sock. Let me see. I hear long time viewers say 
but you already had a sock on the go and you didn't touch it in ages. Yeah, that's right. But this was one of my own yarns and I just wanted to see what it was doing. So a good excuse, right? I started a new sock. I am knitting these on my Haya Haya flyers, I think they call them. So you have three of those needles and you're just knitting like half of the sock and then you have an empty needle again and then you knit the other side like dpn's but not like dpn's like magic loop but not like magic loop <laughs> okay i really love how this color is working out it's self-striped technically it's self-striping but it looks more like micro -stri striping and that's because it's alternating every row or every one and a half row in color and one of the stripes is not a solid but like a variegation in blues so one of the stripes is gray and the other stripe is blue but with different tones of blue in there and I think it's really fun how it knits up it looks like micro striping but it isn't except when you have like really big feet with a hundred stitches in the round <laughs> then it would be micro striping because striping and micro striping always depends on how many stitches you have in one round and how your tension is so I don't think there is anybody that needs a hundred stitches for a sock, right? Am I offending someone now? I hope not. I hope not. If you need a hundred stitches for the circumference of your sock, totally fine. And you can use this as a micro striping yarn. Okay, I did a heel flap and I did it in garter stitch. And I did a heel turn. I think they call this the round heel. It's not the square heel because it's not square. I don't think it's really round either, but I did a heel turn and picked up the stitches on the sides and I'm very happy with how I managed to do that. I think it's a very neat um, edge there. If I'm saying myself. <laughs> I was really happy with that and now I am almost done or just done with the decreases so it's just in the round in the round in the round for the foot of the sock and yeah I made a shorty just because just because and um, I did three by one ribbing yeah three by one um, I do like 2 by one ribbing a lot, but you have like a uneven amount of stitches and that bothers me a lot with the toe decreases, although it's just, just one decrease more on one side than on the other, I just, I can't deal with it. So, <laughs> so I made a 3 by one rib, so I still have 4 stitches <laughs> repeat. Uh, and I think it looks very neat, so very happy with that. And now it's just in around, in around, in around. And yeah, very, very happy with it. This is the Marina Silk Rami base. It's in my shop. I don't think I put this yarn yet in the shop because I want to have a sample, but maybe I can. Here is kind of, kind of a. I can take a picture of this so I have a sample for in the shop and it will be up this weekend no don't say that don't say that I'm not going to to make that that promise I can't make that promise come through it will be in the shop before the end of this month so when you watch in the shop first of May it will be there <laughs> unless someone bought it already but it will be there. Okay. <sighs> All over the place. Okay, continue. Sock. Halfway down the first. Uh, I will be I will be having 
tons of leftover because I'm only making shorty socks and this is like more than way more than 200 meters like like not 500 meters but to uh, 400 plus meters on a 100 gram screen so I will have tons of leftover if I only make short socks so what I was thinking because it would be a waste to um, just leave it somewhere in the house doing nothing uh, I was thinking to make something for in my hair to tie it up or you know the, the hairdressers are still closed and I don't think they will open quite soon and it needs dying because first time in forever I chose to make my hair a complete complete different color than my own hair color and that's the moment the hairdressers cannot work doesn't matter in this time really the only thing that matters is that everybody is safe so I was thinking maybe I will just make something that I can put my hair away and tie it up or something I have some pro uh, some um, projects in my in not in my queue in my wish list on Ravelry which are like they call it turbans I think I don't know if they technically are but it's something where you can put your hair in and you tie it and you can choose to have like you have a lot of hair it can still come out <laughs> I don't have that much hair but we will see maybe I will make something like that because I think it will be fun next to the light hair color we will see I think that's going to happen not now because I'm not casting on at the moment but we will see so that's a work in progress I have one more work in progress to show knitting wise I do have more works in progress but I didn't do that much knitting on them like not worth showing so there's one thing I will show because I've done quite some work on it and it is my first ever pie shawl last time I showed it I think I was in the first lace repeat I think so over here so I'm in the third lace repeat right now so not the third yeah the third chart I think that's a better word <laughs> so uh, pie shawl for those not familiar with it you increase from the center out so you start with a certain amount of stitches you increase every um, like first you increase after a few rounds you increase um, every stitch so you double your stitches then you knit further along a little bit further than the first time let me see if i can show it so here over here i doubled all my uh, i doubled my stitches then you knit a bit double all your stitches you knit a bit more like almost double the amount you did before uh, am i saying that right i don't have the numbers right here right now and this is a little bit different than that you should do so it is just doubling your stitches after a certain amount of rows and every time those amount of rows is bigger than the last time you did it <laughs> oh my god i just can't talk <laughs> i can't talk okay uh, so that means that this piece is all the same amount of stitches and that this piece is the same amount of stitches and that from here on up to I think around here will be the same amount of stitches as it was here so you have one increased row every so often and then you just just knit um, on that amount of stitches I can't show it that good now because it's on a very short not really short but I think this is a 80 centimeters circular needle and this is way bigger than 80 centimeters right now 
Um, so I can't really show it that good, but it's going to be a complete circle in the end. And it will be, it will need a block I think, but not like really aggressively. And I think it will be really fun. I'm not sure yet how I'm going to wear this. I think doubled up and then around like you do a triangular shawl I think. But we will see that. It's just really fun to do. Um, yeah, very happy with it. This is the yarn I'm using. I lost the ball, ball band so can't say which brand it is. Um, I think it's a cotton acrylic blend. I'm quite sure of it because when I'm holding one place too long my hands get a little bit sweaty. So I think it's there's some acrylic in there but yeah that's just the way it is. This was, was deep stash. Uh, there's nothing wrong with knitting for, from acrylic. Um, I just don't like getting the sweaty hands so that's not something I don't prefer but it's not too bad it's I think it's okay um, what I do find kind of important is that I'm not washing my shells like every day I think I don't want to make something out of acrylic yarn that I will wash every day because every time you wash acrylic there will be microfibers going in the washing water going in the um, water supplies and in the sea and stuff so that's just something I don't like to do but for this purpose it's perfectly fine it was it was deep deep stash I think it was doing nothing there for uh, be honest four years three years four years four years no five years maybe I don't know. I don't know. It was a long time in my stash and I didn't know what to do with it until I just woke up one day and was thinking I'm going to make a pie shell out of it. So that's what I'm doing. And please don't be offended if you do a lot of knitting with acrylic. A lot of people do. I just don't like the sweaty hands I get out of it and the idea of putting microfibers in the washing water which everybody does because let's face it who owns a complete closet without any acrylic in there so just everybody makes his own choices really really lovely project to work on okay i have the idea i'm talking a lot without saying anything but we will get through okay let me see I have something else to show you. I've done quite some spinning lately. And I finished one bobbin of this lovely, super gorgeous Scotland fiber quite a while ago. And I finished a second. So very happy with that. And um, I'm going to start the third and when I have three I will make a traditional three ply out of it. I think I divided the total amount of fiber quite equally into three parts but I don't know if you can see it but this one looks, looks like there is less yarn on this one than on that one but that can be like misleading but when this one is spun a little bit thinner than this one it will be tighter on the bobbin so I'm not sure but I'm thinking that I may have made a mistake in weighing the yarn but we will see when we ply it and I just hope I have enough to make a crop cardigan that I was planning to make out of these so I hope I will manage that and I'm very very happy with the color and I love I really love spinning Gotland. You can spin it really fine without even um,
putting too much effort in it and there are really long fibers so there is a lot a lot of time to um, adjust the thickness of your I, I don't know how to explain but I feel I have more control over my spinning with long fibers than with really short ones I did one time try to spin cotton I think never again I think never again those fibers were so short I just they just flew out of my hands and I know you should do like a long draw for cotton and one day I will try to attempt that but even then I don't they were just so slippery that they didn't hold on to each other and I couldn't hold on to it because they were so short it was a disaster I don't even know where that stuff went I think it went just into filling for <laughs> for stuffed animals I think I think I really don't know where it went um, yeah but this long fiber is really fun to do really really fun to do so once I finished the second bobbin of that fiber, I was really enjoying the spinning again. So I also took out my drop spindle again. Um, so here it is. And um, yeah, this is a really nice navy blue. Is it navy blue? I think it's navy blue. I really love, love this blue tone. Um, and I'm doing some drop spindle. This is a homemade drop spindle. I do have a Ashford drop spindle that is a top roll and a bottom roll. This is doing fine, only it's way too heavy to make all my all my 50 grams on this one. I know this one can hold a 50 grams like just. Um, but I started this one, this fiber on this um, spindle ages, ages ago. So um, I just continued spinning on this. But I did know I have 50 grams of this fiber. So I split it in two. And I will, I'll, I will spin the other 50 grams on this one. And it will be a two ply. So it will be fine to have it on to spindles maybe even better because you can ply the two threads together on the spinning wheel for example or on the third drop spindle which I don't have but yeah I know the first I have like a light blue purplish color uh, from the same fiber and I did it all on this spindle it was huge <laughs> it was really filled up completely and I took it all off on my hand and I did a two ply out of my hand there's a special technique in which in how you wrap the yarn around so you can spin a uh, ply from both ends without getting it tangled didn't work completely the way I wanted but it did work the technique worked only my yarn broke a few times so it was not that easy as it could be but I can do two spindles and plying that together that will be the same effect it will be also a two ply so that's the plan I think and yeah it's really fun to do as my um, youngest son saw me playing, playing spinning with this and he wanted to try he is three years old and there's no way he has the patience to learn how to spin on a drop spindle not my son in any case if there's a three-year-old able to spin fiber on a drop spindle it will be lovely and really fun but my son isn't <laughs> going to be that one so um, I just put a thread on the hook and let him spin it and he could let it spin so that was really fun and he was really thinking he was joining me in spinning so that was really really fun and then my eldest son said I want to spin as well but I want to do it on the big spinning wheel I have a Ashford Kiwi 3 
which I love using and uh, that's what, what I'm spinning these um, these bobbins on and there was nothing on there at the moment so I could um, try something out with him um, the drafting of the fiber was a little bit too hard for him but he could threadle so I put a small like um, seat in front of me in, in between my legs and he was allowed to threadle and I was spinning the fiber and he was threadling like really really fast and sometimes just stopping out of nowhere because he thought he had to stop or something so I was spinning and I just I had a leftover piece of fiber and I just without thinking that the fiber in the wheel and it was really fun and he was really thinking that he was doing the spinning and he did half of it he did the treadling so that was really fun this came out it needs it still needs a wash so it's really crinkly right now I will leave it a single ply and um, I'm going to make something for his for his animals I think he has a lot of stuffed animals like a monkey and some figures out of series he knows and those things so he said they can use a hat so I hope I have enough to make him a little hat for one of his animals and it's really fun that he that we made this together so that's really really nice I think those were all the things I have been working on no okay <laughs> it's really bad that I am um, forgetting this one because right next to the camera is my uh, how do you say that um, dress doll I don't know the English term like a doll you can fit your clothes on you're making I just can't remember the English term um, it's standing right next to the camera wearing a dress I'm working on and I will let me see how are we going to do this I will just take it off because turning the camera is not a good idea I think I will just take it off so I'm working on a dress out of a jeans fabric a really dark jeans uh, it has war one uh, finished armhole the other side is still unfinished the neckline is not finished yet and yeah I'm very happy with how I am managing this because there is quite some top stitching happening and I chose to do it with a contrast color because the black yarn I, I used to um, sew it all together really didn't show and it's really nice because when you make a mistake you can't see it but for the top stitching it's really a part of the dress so I chose to do it in a contrasting yarn like not a yellow or something but like a grey tone so you can see it's there and I'm very happy that I managed to keep it neat and let me see it still needs a zipper at the back turn it around and that's what I'm waiting for at the moment because the pattern says to finish the arm holes uh, after you place the zipper but I don't have the zipper yet and the supplier I normally use don't have them in stock now so I could use I could look at another supplier but I have like um, how do you say that I paid once a certain amount of money to get all the shippings after that for free so they're not for free because I paid a certain amount but like getting two shipments in already uh, saved me money and I really wanted to get most out of it so 
that's why I didn't look at anybody else to buy a zipper but I think when they don't have it in stock for the coming week maybe I will order it somewhere else because um, yeah it really <laughs> it really needs the zipper before I can finish it off and it would be really nice to be able to see how it's going to be when it's completed so yeah um i know the uh, thoughts of using denim is um, different from person to person i really like working with it it's a really stable it is, this is a denim without stretch so it's a really sturdy fabric it's not going to um, change shape when you're sewing with it or anything uh, it's a little bit thicker which gives a little bit of problems when there are a lot of layers together <laughs> like especially up here you have the layer from your dress from the inside of the armhole from the outside and then the seams going in there there's a lot of fabric over there so you have to be careful with that and cut some things away sometime but yeah i really like uh working with it it's very stable and that's really really nice so we will see how this will end up i was trying it on yesterday i think and i'm thinking it may need a little bit of tweaking around the waist because my waist is um, smaller in comparison to my the rest of my body um, and it's like not showing that really in this uh, type of dress so i'm thinking of um, making some seams over the front to take it in a little but i won't do that until it's completely finished because i couldn't tip it up and you can't really see how it's going to be working out but i think maybe it needs that maybe not because sometimes it's really flattering when something is just a little bit wider we will see we will see but yeah this, this took a lot of my crafting time and my alone time because because uh, we don't have that much of alone time these days so um, yeah I took some time alone and I worked on this and I'm very very happy with how it's working out and how I managed to follow the pattern I've never had any sewing lessons or anything so it's not like something um, everybody learns over here uh, like with most crafting there's not really like a subject anymore that does all the crafting here in Holland so um, when you want to learn something like that you have to take extra classes outside of school or maybe there's a relative that can teach you in my case case I uh, did not go to any classes and let's face it my mom won't mind if i say she is not really like a so so seamstress uh, she doesn't like it so i thought myself with reading things about it and just trying and trying and this is one of the first things i made that i was completely understanding everything they were doing and that's a really good feeling so yeah that's really really nice and i'm planning on taking some home homeschooling classes um, on some techniques and making uh, like pattern drawing because i really uh, yeah i really want to learn how to how a pattern is constructed and how you can alter patterns to make it fit better or make up your completely your own things so that's something that i hope will happen uh, when my youngest son goes to school because then i have a little bit more time at home and uh, yeah i think that will be really really fun 
So, almost forgot it, but really it took a lot of my time the past two weeks. So, uh, I think that's everything. I hope you <laughs> you managed to keep up with me. It's a really strange episode, I don't know why, but I couldn't find the words and I was talking about completely unrelated stuff and things but yeah I hope I hope you enjoyed it um, so this will be it for uh, today next time I will record in I think in two weeks that's my birthday weekend I hope I can squeeze an episode in if not you will you will know soon enough but um yeah so no big birthday party not really the kind of person that throws a lot of parties but it's my 30th birthday so it would have been nice to give a little party but we can't now so that's okay and i will make it cozy with my um with my husband and my sons here at home so that will be will be fine and i will be 30 and i don't have to share it with everybody <laughs> i'm sharing it on the internet now so everybody will know but um yeah no big party for me this year so um i hope maybe there will be some presents i can show you maybe not we will see i don't know what they did manage to arrange behind my back but we will see and uh, I hope that everybody stays safe and I will see you in two weeks bye